you talk about the greatest trios in rock, some obvious names come up, and rightly so. But there's a not-so-obvious name. Some of you may have heard of them, some of you may have not. It is Zebra, one of the greatest bands to come down the line who never, ever, ever fully got their due. Let's check them out. So in 1983, I got this album on cassette. It was actually many years before I bought it on LP and started reading some of the lyrics, so I was singing wrong lyrics. And singing was one of the things that really got me about these guys. This was an insane kind of combination of influences that came out into something really memorable. You had Guy Gelso, Felix Hanneman, and the great Randy Jackson on vocals. All of these guys could sing, so there was just this kind of influence of Beatles, Zeppelin, with a little bit of Rush thrown in that created something completely unique. And these guys did not just lean on their influences. There are tremendous songs in this album, insane vocals by the great Randy Jackson, who can still pull some of this stuff off today. So when I got this album, I would walk around on my paper route real early in the morning with my dad's Walkman on, listening to this, wondering how I could ever sing like Randy Jackson. And the answer is, you're not going to. <laughs> this is a hardworking trio. If you go to a Zebra show, you're going to see Felix on keyboard more than he's even on bass, and he and Guy Gelso handling backing vocals flawlessly, amazingly. As for Guy Gelso on drums, it finally came to me the other day that he sort of reminds me of having the same kind of mindset as the late great John Panazzo from Styx. There's great rock drumming in there, but there's also some kind of orchestral, borderline progish moments that really propel songs forward. This trio is amazing. So Zebra's got a lot of stuff online, both uh, live stuff and studio album stuff. I don't tend to play stuff here because I want to respect people's uh, copyrights. Copyrighted music is how I make part of my living, so I try and be real respectful of that. But it is absolutely worth checking out. If you're younger or maybe you just miss these guys, you are completely missing out on one of the great all-time trios, one of the great all-time bands that ever came down the line with one of the best singers for my money. He's in my top 10. He is a phenomenal vocalist. The songs on here are incredible. Probably if you have heard of these guys, and you really should have, you probably heard Tell Me What You Want or Who's Behind the Door or both. Both of them really uh, well conceived. There's an obvious Zeppelin influence, but a ton of originality in the way that's handled and the way those songs are put together. These guys also really influenced my guitar playing. There were some amazing, really intricate guitar parts on this album and the ones that followed. And I actually had to go to my guitar teacher and try and figure this stuff out. A lot of stuff I could kind of figure out listening to the album. But uh, the great, the late great Bill Hanatic, who was my guitar teacher, and uh, any of Bill's families out there, God bless you, that guy really forwarded my momentum as a guitar player and I miss him to this day. But he actually showed me some of the parts on the first Zebra album and I had to woodshed those for quite a while but also there was some stuff in there that kind of naturally came to my fingers and it really influenced me maybe as much as Rush, Van Halen, some Boston, uh, some other players like uh, Steve Vai, Nuno Betancourt that I came across. Zebra was a huge influence on me guitar wise. Vocally, trying to keep up with Randy Jackson is like trying to keep up with Brad Delp, Freddie Mercury, or Robert Plant. The guy is just a force of nature, even to this day. But it was a great uh, sort of workout trying to keep up with what he did on songs like Tell Me What You Want or Who's Behind the Door. One of my favorites is Don't Walk Away, which I could actually sing most of, and I developed a little trick to kind of hit the high note in there. 
But um, learning to use my mixed voice because of Randy Jackson is one of the reasons I was able to uh, really play music live for about 15 years and not hurt myself in the process. So why didn't Zebra get the kind of massive global notoriety that maybe Rush or even the police or Van Halen or any of their contemporaries had? I'm honestly not sure because they absolutely deserve it to this day. They still sound fantastic. So it's my hope if you for some reason have not heard of Zebra that you'll actually try this stuff on. It's all online. You can see here both the studio cuts and some fantastic live performances and they're still out there doing it. I found some footage even as recent as 2023. These guys are absolutely worth checking out. One of my all-time favorite bands, one of my all-time favorite vocalists. I use this as the gold standard for some of the stuff I do to this day, and to this day, I still cannot sing like this guy, or probably any of them, but I keep trying, and I think it's the trying that actually has me keep moving forward. So that's it for me. Zebra, the debut album. If you haven't heard this, you're absolutely only hurting yourself. So get out there and try it on right away. We'll talk to you soon.